Hi and welcome to another lecture with Marine Biology at Home. Before we get started, a quick reminder to check out our Facebook page. And remember that we have a YouTube channel, so please like and subscribe to Biology at Home to find all of our content in one place and to stay up to date as new lectures come out. So what are we learning about here? Well, this lecture is all about fisheries. What are fisheries? How do we characterize and describe fisheries? How do we manage fisheries for sustainability? These are some of the things we're gonna cover here. And who the heck am I? And how do I come to be talking with you about fisheries in this lecture? Well, my name is Dr. Chelsea Crandall and I'm a fisheries scientist. My background is pretty broad and I've worked in all sorts of marine systems around the world and with many different marine species. But my work in graduate school and beyond after that centers around fisheries, their science and their management. And I'm super excited to introduce you all to fisheries and fisheries science here. So let's get started and let's start with the basics. What is a fishery? Now, if you're not familiar with this term, don't worry. I didn't know what a fishery was until I went to college and took a fisheries course. A fishery is more or less what you get when you have people fishing. So a fishery is a system in which you have people out there catching an animal that lives in the water. That's a bit of a simple definition, but you get the general idea. Fisheries are these coupled human nature systems where we have organisms, animals that live in the wild in aquatic environments and habitats, and people and all their associated gears and technologies who go out and catch them. Side note, that's actually a picture of my spouse and one of our kids on the right there participating in a fishery. So here we're gonna focus on what we call wild capture fisheries. Again, these are all about people catching fish in the water in the wild. This is different from fish farming, what we call aquaculture. Though sometimes these overlap. So for example, if we're out catching wild fish and then we bring them back and raise them up in captivity, or if we raise fish to then release them into the wild to enhance wild populations, we can have some overlap. But again, here we're gonna focus on these wild capture fisheries. And there are so many different kinds of fisheries and different ways we think about defining and characterizing fisheries. So for example, Sometimes we talk about fisheries in terms of where people are fishing. So we might talk about marine fisheries or freshwater fisheries. We might talk about inshore fisheries or offshore fisheries, nearshore fisheries or inland fisheries. And we might get more discreet than that. We might talk about reef fisheries, for example. Again, where the fishery is happening is one way to characterize a fishery. We can also characterize and describe fisheries in terms of why people are fishing. So broadly, we generally think about three types of fisheries in this way. The subsistence fisheries, where people are out catching fish for food, to feed themselves, to feed their families. Commercial fisheries, where people are out catching fish for profit, to sell, it's their work. And recreational fisheries, where people are out fishing for fun. It's a sport, it's a leisure activity, it's something they just enjoy doing. And we can also characterize and define fisheries in terms of how people are fishing. What gears or technologies are they using? We can talk about net fisheries, rod and reel fisheries, trap fisheries, for example. And we can also characterize fisheries in terms of the target species. So we might talk about the red snapper fishery or the redfish fishery. 
the catfish fishery. Again, defining a fishery based on the target species that's being caught. And it's important to note here that fisheries includes all animals that are caught in the water. So a fishery does not have to be about a fish. You can have a crab fishery, a lobster fishery, an oyster fishery, a scallop fishery like those you see here. We're going to mostly talk about fish today, but again, a fishery really refers to any animal that people are out there catching. And so again, these are some of the diverse ways we categorize and characterize fisheries. Think about them in terms of what people are catching, where they're fishing, why they're fishing, and what they're fishing with. Okay, so we have people out on the water catching fish. Why, why do we care? Why are fisheries important? And why do we have a whole lesson devoted to fisheries? Well, let's take a pause for a second here. We're about six minutes in now. Look away from your screen for a second, close your eyes if you want to, and think about fish, fish and fishing, fisheries in general. How do you connect with fisheries? Why might fisheries be important to you or to people in general? Think on this for about 10 seconds. I'll wait. Okay, what'd you come up with? <laughs> well, looking at it from the human perspective, fish and fisheries are important to people for many reasons. Fish and fish species are important sources of protein, and for many communities, one of the only sources of meat and protein. We eat fish, we use fish products, we feed fish to our pets, and fishing has a big economic impact. Think not only of the fish that are caught and sold for purchase, that go to restaurants and stores, and all the money that's exchanged in those transactions, but also think of all the gear that's associated with fishing. The boating industry, the tackle industry, fishing clothing, fishing wear. There are a lot of products made and sold and a lot of businesses supported by fishing and fisheries. And think about tourism. People travel all around the world to go fishing. And there are specific industries like charter and guides that tailor to recreational fishing where you can go and hire someone to take you out to catch fish for fun. In addition, fishing is a way of life for many people and it's connected to their personal and community identities. And it may be a le leisure activity for them. It might bring them joy. These are just a few examples, and you may have thought of more, of how fishing and fisheries are important to people, communities, and economies. Okay, so that was fisheries from the human perspective. What about the ecosystem perspective? Let's pause again and think for a minute. Why might people be worried about fisheries? What concerns might there be about fishing? Again, take about 10 seconds, I'll wait again, and we'll come back together. All right, so why are people concerned about fisheries? And I imagine you came up with some great ideas. There are a number of reasons people are concerned about fishing and the impacts of fisheries. To start with, we want to make sure we don't take too many fish and end up with an empty ocean. In addition, fish are themselves part of the ecosystem. And so removing fish might impact food webs or have other ecosystem level impacts. In addition, the act of fishing itself can impact ecosystems. For example, when there's physical impacts on habitat from fishing gear or impacts when we accidentally catch or injure non-target species. And some, there are some concerns about occasional fisheries interactions with endangered marine species. And so fisheries management is all about trying to balance these things. 
balancing the needs of people with the needs of our ocean ecosystems. So that we don't see the collapses we hear concerns about, we see talked about in the news, in reports, and on social media. So that our communities can continue to thrive while our ecosystems also thrive. And so the rest of this lecture is going to focus in on the elements of fisheries and their management that feed directly into this goal, helping us sustainably manage fisheries. And to start, you're going to need to know a few fisheries terms. The first is stock. Have you heard of a fish stock before? And no, this is not the stock I'm referring to here. We're not talking about soup stock. We're talking about this fish stock. A fish stock is essentially a managed unit of fish. You can think of it as a population or a subpopulation. And, but it's a semi-discrete group of fish with some definable attributes that set them apart for the purposes of management. And so, for example, if we look at my state of Florida, many of our species are divided into Gulf of Mexico stocks and Atlantic stocks. And each stock is managed separately and considered to be its own unit. So we look at them separately, we study them separately, we manage them separately. We think of them as different stocks. Okay, so now we know what a stock is. What is a stock assessment? A stock assessment is a really important part of fisheries science and management. This is the evaluation of the stock. What tells us if the stock is doing okay or if it's headed for collapse. And it's a pretty complex process because it turns out it's really hard to know how well a fishery is doing. So let's do another exercise to explore this. Okay, close your eyes again, or just look away at something, stare out your window. Imagine you're standing on a beach. You've got the sand under your toes. Sounds pretty nice, right? You hear the waves. Look out at the ocean. You see the water, you see the waves. How many fish are out there? Can you count them? Can you even see them? Are they moving? How far are they moving? If you came back in 10 years, could you tell if anything had changed? Okay, you can open your eyes. So the point is, it's really hard to count fish and to figure out what's going on with fish and fish stocks. It's very different from other resources like trees, for example where we can go and count them and know exactly how many there are. We knew exactly how many there were 10 years ago, and we can count them again 10 years from now. And there are many other factors, in addition to just how many are there, that are important in helping us assess a fishery. And so in a stock assessment, we pull together all sorts of information about that fish stock and that fishery to help us figure out what is going on. And these assessments are based on some pretty cool mathematical modeling of fish populations that itself pulls from three main categories of information. The first are abundance data. So abundance data is just a measure or some sort of index of the abundance, the number or weight of fish that we think are in that stock. So ideally, we get abundance data from statistically designed scientific surveys that go out and sample across the fish's range. However, that's not always possible, so we can sometimes use other metrics, like calibrations on what people have been catching, to provide us measures of abundance. Biological data are the data on the fish themselves. How old do they get? At what age do they start reproducing? How fast do they grow? How big do they grow? How often do they reproduce? 
And you can imagine why knowing things like these might be important. You might manage a fast-growing, short-lived fish that's reproducing all the time very differently from a slow-growing fish that lives to be 150 and only reproduces every five years. And you might be more worried about the status of that slow-growing fish. And catch data is pretty self-explanatory. This is information on what people have been catching or how much fish people have taken from the stock. And again, we have some really cool, complex mathematical tools that pull all of these data together to give us an idea of what has been going on historically, how the stock is doing now, and predictions of what the future will look like. And this helps us understand how many fish can be caught from a stock. Now we don't always have all of this information to help us assess a fishery. And a lot of research focuses on how to assess stocks that are what we call data poor so that we can still target sustainable management. And stock assessments help managers make decisions about fisheries. How much fish can people catch this year? Which fisheries are doing great? And which ones might need to be more tightly managed or even closed for recovery? Having a stock assessment and information on what's going on with the stock now and predictions about what will happen in the future help managers make decisions that can help them reach their management goals. And one of those commonly common goals is something called achieving maximum sustainable yield. So this is your la almost your last definition today. So maximum sustainable yield is more or less the most we can catch from a fishery. It's the maximum level at which a natural resource, or in this case, a fishery, can be routinely and regularly exploited without long-term depletion. So in other words, again, it's the most we can catch from that stock without depleting the stock in the long run. And what we want to avoid are things called overfishing or having a stock that has been overfished. And these terms are your last definitions today. So overfishing means we've been fishing and catching too much. We've been fishing at an unsustainable level. The pressure's too high. Overfished means that the biomass or the amount of fish in the stock is unsustainably low and might need to recover. You can have one of these without the other. You can have overfishing without having a stock that's overfished or vice versa. You can have low fishing pressure on a stock that has been overfished, but clearly neither of them is ideal. And again, the aim with fisheries management and with all the science that goes into assessing stocks and making decisions about managing fisheries is to balance the needs of people and ecosystems and to ensure sustainable fishing for now and into the future. And so this was an overview introduction to the basics of fisheries. But again, we've only hit on a few things. We haven't talked about things like incorporating economics or incorporating ecology or the ideas of ecosystem-based fisheries management. Everything we've looked at is really focused on single species management, but how do we manage fisheries as part of an ecosystem? When we remove those fish, what impact does it have on the food web, for example? Can we have ecosystem-based fisheries management? Fisheries are super complex, but that's what makes them super fun to study. And understanding fisheries means knowing a lot more than just about fish biology or fish ecology. Those are also really important parts of it. It also means studying economics. It means incorporating ideas from the human dimensions and the social sciences and the political sciences to look at how we govern and manage our fisheries. Again, fisheries are complex and multifaceted multifaceted, but they're super interesting, really important, and really fun to study. 
And with that, you have a basic introduction into the awesome world that is fisheries and fisheries science. Before we wrap up today, I want to encourage everyone to please help spread the word about marine biology at home. If you know people who might enjoy our content or might like to contribute, please send them over to our Facebook page. And remember, you can head there if you have any questions about today's lecture. And we have an awesome team contributing to this lecture series. And if you know someone else who wants to help or might be interested in helping, please get in touch. Thank you.